Mike O'Mara, Radio Entertainment. You can listen to The Mike O'Mara Show at MikeO'MaraShow.com. Let's get started. It's The Mike O'Mara Show with Mike O'Mara, Oscar Santana, and Rob Spiewak. Now, here's Mike. Stillwater, Oklahoma, Catawba, Virginia, Wauwatosa, Wisconsin, Tonopah, Nevada, <laughs> Clabraca, North Carolina, St. Lucia in the Windward Islands of the Lesser Antilles. Is this the city list that has the most words that end in the letter A? It's the most vowels of A that I've ever seen. Wow. Welcome to the Mike O'Mara and on a cruise ship somewhere in the uh, Caribbean. As I uh, like to live vicariously through the happiest retired man, the happiest retired bus driver in the world... Uh, and regarding his travel schedule and the resorts and cruises he goes on to, two options, a uh, wealthy wife or connected to the mafia. Polly Christine. Why not both? Which, or, wi- or both, yes, or both. A saver, not a sexy. Yeah, no kids, right? So maybe a no, saver. No, he has to have a kid because he has no, a grandkid now. He left one in St. Lucia. Oh, that's his, I think that's his grandnephew. Oh, I thought that was his grandkid. Yeah. I don't know. Mm. Pauly, uh, come on the show. Let's talk Pauly Christine sometime. Love to talk People to that him. don't have kids. <laughs> Rob's shaking his head. Have more yeah. money. Yeah, that's true. You know, yeah, that's I true. will salute Pauly in the fact that only he could go to the beautiful South Seas in the middle of winter. That wouldn't be the South Seas. That would be the Caribbean. Oh, yeah, the Caribbean then. Oh, I mean, South so Seas would be Tahiti. Okay. Yeah. Bora Bora. Tulagi, Tulagi. Guadalcanal. But he can go to a tropical South destination seas. and post 50 pictures and they all look hazy and cold. I would tell you this, that <laughs> that is a part of the world I would like to see someday. Bora Bora? I would like to go to uh, the South Pacific, where my father uh, well, you fought love in the mu- WW2. You love the musical, too. What? Uh, what's the? F- well, give me a famous song from South Pacific. Bally High. Ba- is that Bally High? Yes. Mm-hmm. Really? Yeah. Bally High. Wasn't right, that one gonna- of the locations when we did our our Florida jaunt? There was a bar called Bally High, and we always we sang that after forty drinks. Lanny Kai. Lanny. Oh, but we did sing that song. Which, to uh, the best of my knowledge, survived. Uh, Hurricane E, and I literally walked among the pillars of it to uh, take a peek at it. And it. I tell you, concrete, man, you know, yeah. sometimes concrete holds up. In the case of certain strip joints, it doesn't. No. But, uh, <laughs> listen, I decided we'd have a little fun here because I uh, oh. I like to multitask. Stop the and I like to dual purpose my my effort. Yeah. Now, this morning, uh, we're taping an hour earlier, and uh, I was very proud when I came in, Oscar, that the 25-minute trip down to my kid's school and the 25-minute uh, back, uh, departing the house at 7.05, uh, made it with uh, one minute to spare, and I was thrilled because it was... Bingo, know, bango. It was... It was yesterday... You had Big several win. deadlines Big to win. hit, and you nailed Big it. Big win. Yeah. You know, as we turn into Northern Virginia, down here in Southwest Florida, <laughs> yesterday, Mrs. O'Mara, who had drop-off duty... Uh, Roughly uh, seven fifteen, leaving the house, the kid gets to school at nine thirty. Wow! Uh, oh. Unfortunately, that's what happens when a pedestrian is hit. Oh uh, no! On the main, on the main. See, drag. if they you're gonna, gonna do some, down. if you're gonna have some automotive accident, at least don't hit a pedestrian. Yeah, just flip your car. Pedestrian. Just flip your car. I <laughs> uh, watched a great viral video. The kid was okay. Uh, kid on a crotch rocket flipping off mm-hmm. a uh, police officer. As he drove by and then T-boned by a pickup truck and survived. Mm. And they showed not only the kid getting hit, but they showed the arrest. In that particular circumstance, uh, you know, where the kid goes, I hurt my leg. Yeah. Yeah. Shut up. I get the, uh, <laughs> yeah, I get the cops being yeah. uh, angry. So last night, uh, with the test coming up on Wednesday, tomorrow, my son is working on his social studies. Ah. And his social studies... Uh, involves states and capitals and nicknames for states. Oh, now, like the oh. show me state. Yes. The capital part might be easy. So okay. I've decided uh, academically, even though he is the most educated, I'm going to give Oscar 
the state capitals. All right. And because Rob is better at these games, I will give Rob the state nicknames. Great. Okay. So Does you're going to give me to you, That sounds fair. You're going to give me the nickname and I'll give you the state, not yes. the other way around. Uh Oscar? Yeah. Yeah, I'll do and I'll do each state with the two questions for each state. This is what we were working and I made I printed up my own flashcard. Okay, so I should have to go first because after we reveal the state, then he'll know the capital. Prior to becoming a that naturalized be citizen, yeah. I had to name all 50 states, but not the capital. Which was, by the way, his naturalization completed yesterday. And we it think it's wonderful. terrific. Yes. He came in waving his little flag. Love it was America. nice. Yeah. Only had 48 stars, but it was good. And uh, that works for those of you that don't know anything about citizenship. That works by uh, people from different lands yeah. going into the naturalization <laughs> machine. And it goes, Mike. Doo, 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 doo. Like he'll walk in. <laughs> beep, boop, beep. Uh, <laughs> Like a pan flute player yeah. from La Path. Yes. <laughs> and he will come out in that suit that he's wearing right there. You get, If you get Perfectly 100% American. on the stage, they give you a suit. Yeah. A, a good suit. A yeah. pretty good suit, yeah. It's like coming out of prison. Yeah. These well, colors on my shirt are from the Bolivian flag. They don't give you a suit. Didn't they used to give you a suit when you came out of prison? No. No, they give you what you came in with. Oh, okay. All right. All right. In my case, a lovely frock. <laughs> Blues, comma Jake. When I did my, <laughs> when I did my time. Well, uh, I remember we having to surrender my shoelaces, but I think they let me keep my suit. Um, well, and, and you know that was a Rob didn't commit any major crime. It was just a accumulated uh, amount of traffic violations. Well, they, Mike, I was in liver prison. <laughs> liver prison. Are you ready for the quiz? Yes. Go ahead, uh, Rob. Yes. The nickname of Alaska. You see, you did this backwards to me. I thought you were going to give me the nickname, and I'll give you the... I would say... Um, no, no, you get the state, and then you have to tell... That would be easy if I gave you the uh, Well, I know back in the day, it was called Seward's Folly, wasn't it? No. Okay, so Wait, hold on. No, that was... I'm thing. not doing like a, a... Okay, I will say... Where the hell is my son? Uh, Alaska. Uh, the Great Tundra State. Are you ready? Yeah. Oscar, and by the way, if you happen to know yeah. the nickname, uh, the Great White you, North, that's the Mackenzie Brothers. Surprisingly close. No. What, what is it? The Last Frontier. Ooh. Oh, like that. Yeah. Mm. And Oscar, we now ask you a question. A from, state. Uh, uh, capital. The, uh, the capital of Alaska. Oh God. Um, ah, be good ah, about this. Shush. Alaska, 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 Alaska. All right, I'll give you a hint. Yes. What did Tom Gavin used to say all the time? <laughs> he had a two-word phrase that he used to say. Da -da. That's a what really good clue. But that is such a great clue. I don't think he's going to get it. Oh, by the way, this is I know this is for me. Thank you. Oh, I have it too. Okay. I found, I found God, it. Uh, I don't want to have it. Juno That's and Tom used Juno. to say Juno. Jesus a lot of people Christ. think it's gnome. Uh, Rob Spiewak, are you ready? Yes, go ahead. What is the nickname of the state of Colorado? Hmm, Colorado is oh the Rocky Mountain state. Oscar, Oscar, any guesses? Uh, no, I would have said Rocky Mountain High. In my opinion, hardest one on the list. Okay. The Centennial State. Why? I don't know. It's the 100th state. Know. How about this? We smoke a Get lot it? of pot. It's the 100th state. That's funny. <laughs> that was funny. That gets a... Uh, no, that gets... No, the, uh, the crowd likes that one. Yay! 100th state. Uh, Oscar, what is the capital of Colorado? Um, Boulder. No. I'm sorry. Denver. Denver is correct. Yes. Yeah, you should have gone with your should have no, gone with your an gut. Ex, an ex-girlfriend went to By Boulder, the way, this oh, quiz is on the western states for my son. Oh, so uh, he doesn't have to know all 50. Oscar, this one might be one you can get. Now yes. pay attention and focus, please. Yes, sir. All right? Yes. Oklahoma. What is the nickname for Oklahoma? The Sooner State. Rob. Rob. What? I was asking Oscar. Yeah, he he said gets Oscar. the he, say Oscar. he gets yeah. the nicknames, and I said, "What is wrong with you?" No, mouth? no, 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 mouth. Listen, you said clearly yeah, that I was going to do nicknames. He switched it up. He said Oscar. Yeah, but I thought that you would get it after I got it. 
You, you broke well, because format. I gave it to him because it was easy. And Rob, if you got it, you answer correct. It is the Sooner yeah. State. All right. Like the now we'll team. we'll keep it back. But I I reserve the right to all right. flip. All right, flip. Okay. Well, uh, yeah, I love flip. What, what, yeah. what is the capital of the state of Oklahoma? Capital of the state of Oklahoma is <laughs> MBA, ladies and gentlemen, mm. Masters mm. of Business Administration, Oklahoma City. Hey! Hey! There you go. Congratulations. There you go. Well done. Thank you. Well done. Thank you. Uh, That was all right. You should go there. Rob Spiewak. And not do the show. (laughs) No, no. Take a thing with you, but just go there. Rob Spiewak. Speaking. What is the nickname for the state of New Mexico? New Mexico. Ah, I've got it. I have thinking music, too. Hold on just a second. The nickname for New Mexico is Better Than Old Mexico. <laughs> that is that is incorrect. I have no answer for you. <laughs> Oscar, would you like to hazard a guess? Uh, um, <laughs> north of Mexico. No, and I will give you another one of my hints, and if either one yeah. of you can get it, you'll yes. get the uh, nickname, all right? Yeah. Aha! Eureka! No. The Eureka State. The land of... Oh, discovery! Enchantment! Oh, enchantment! enchantment? Uh, I thought yeah. it was gold. Oscar, what is the uh, capital of New Mexico? Oh God! This is where they fi- this is where they film Breaking Bad. True. Oh my God! But I don't think in this city. Oh, don't know. San Jose. Santa Fe. Oh, San Jose is not Santa Fe. No, Santa Fe, not San Jose. What does Santa Fe mean in Spanish? Saint something. Yes. Saint Santa Fe. Saint Fe. Fe. Belief. Saint belief. Fe. Fe is belief. Ah, okay. I got Saint that belief. going. I got that going for me. I like my thinking music. It's it, great. It, it makes it very yeah. tense. Uh, I'm what is uh, Rob Spiewak? Yes. What is the nickname for the state of Nevada, where we have a lot of wonderful listeners? Nevada. Nevada, as they pronounce it. Not Nevada. 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 Yeah. Nevada is... Um, we still have most of Mike's money. State. I'm sorry that is incorrect. All right. Anybody like to uh, hazard a guess? Uh, if you've you, got them, uh, like smoke them. That is incorrect. Lots does it have the word? No, cigarettes. I bet it has the word gold in it somehow. It does not, but you are unbelievably close. Silver. Yes. The silver state. The silver state is correct, right? Nice. Yeah. 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 We remember the silver nugget was there. The golden nugget. Oscar. With silver after we left. Left. We're, we're looking for a correct answer here. Yes. Yes. What is the capital of Nevada? Uh, Nikki would know. No, stop talking. I'm thinking here. Uh, the capital it's a quiz. He'll babble for the entire thing. Yeah, it's... Um, yes, he will. It's not Las Vegas. It's Reno. No. No, that it's... Is, uh, uh, it's uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Well, I have to give you your buzzer for Reno. Reno. Great capital. It's not Las Vegas. Oh, no, I don't know. That is incorrect. I don't know. Rob Spiewak, would you like to tell him? Uh, it is... Why is it escaping me right now? I knew it is... Ah! <laughs> I got both of you. Yes. You dummy. Carson City. Yeah, Hi-oh! <laughs> yes, it's wild, wild stuff. I used to know that, and I... Uh, By the way, I the I little man, it. it would be waxing you on Of me. course. It's fresh in his brain. All right, here we go. Rob Spiewak, are you ready? Go. What is the nickname for the state of Utah? Utah. Um, more Mormons. I think I got this one wrong. The Utah would be. Somebody look up what the. Uh, I, I, it, I'll look it I up. I think okay. it's wrong. All right. More Utah. I would say uh, God's country. It's God's that is country. Correct. It is known as the Beehive State. Really? Yeah, I don't know if that one's right. Yeah, it is. It is. It is the Beehive State. Oscar, what is the capital of Utah? Oh, the Utah Jazz play there. Salt Lake City. Yay! Yay! Congratulations. Very nice. You you. know what body of water is there? This is an educational uh, program. It is. All right. Tough one for both of you here. Okay. Rob Spiewak, the nickname for the state of Washington. These nicknames are tough. They are. Home the, of Dirk Bastrick. Ooh. The Apple State. That is in. 
correct. Ah, salty. I think it's. I yes. think the state is sponsored by Rainex, the Rainex state. I will give you a hint. Okay. Think trees. Ooh. The land of the oaks. <laughs> the mighty. Oh, I'm sorry, Mike. I like to change my answer. Land of oaks. The land of the mighty oaks. The Evergreen State, you moron. Oh, okay. Um, but like Christmas trees. The Land of the Oaks is uh, funny, though. Oscar, <laughs> yeah. what is the capital of the state of Washington? Seattle. Incorrect. No. No, oh, Jesus. <laughs> Rob Spiewak, you want to try? Doesn't it? Is it Olympia? It is Olympia. Yeah. Way to go, Rob yeah. Spiewak. I know See? the bluest skies I've ever seen. Yeah, but that's an old television show that nobody knows about. That's What's not that? academically sound, you see. But you had Olympia, and you get the yeah, academic wins. answer as well. Thank you. All right, here's another one where the nickname stumped me. That's why I brought Be- this in Beehive today. Man, these state. Western states are tough. The Beehive State. <laughs> what? They were drinking. All right, this one I never got. Michael has the uh, the toughest time with this one. All right. Wyoming. What is the nickname, Rob Spiewak, of the state of Wyoming? Mm. See how hard these are? Yeah. So wide open spaces... Right? Sure. Okay. That'll help you. Uh, so that's probably all. No beehives. I know that. We've already had that one. Uh, Wyoming. Okay, Cow- the cowboy country. That is incorrect. I, what is my hint? I would love a hint. Everybody's treated the same. The equality state? The equality state is correct. Thank stupid. you very much. And <laughs> hey, Wyoming, Wyoming, you're a stupid state. That should be their capital, motto. Capital of Wyoming. Jackson Hole. That is incorrect. Damn it. Oops. Is it Cheyenne? Cheyenne is correct. Rob Spiewak Man, nailing with the Capitals. I played That's the night ball I took last them. night. We're winding down, gentlemen. Foggy brain. All right. Uh, I think both of you should get these. This okay. should be the first one, by the way, where you're both correct. Texas. What is the nickname of Texas, Rob Spiewak? Uh, oh, my God. Oh, the- my God. God, that no. one's super easy. Is it? It is yeah. super easy. Thank yeah, you, it Pony. Is. Thank you for the tip. All right, I, yeah. do, I defer to Pony then. He's the so Lone ahead, Star Pony. State. The Lone Star State. Uh, of Pony course. Boy, Matt Thank Flo. you. And now, the Oscar, capital. you have an opportunity. It's Austin. It's Austin. Nicely yes. done. Congratulations, Rob. There's only one star on the Cowboys' helmet. A lone star. Magna cum bullshit. <laughs> hey, come uh, on. Anyway. I don't care if All you right. insult me, but don't make Pony bleep it. There we go. Uh, here we go. <laughs> Oregon. Rob, what is the uh, nickname for the state of Oregon? Oregon. <laughs> you want to end? Yeah. The Beaver State? Yes. It is. You could have given me a different hint than that. <laughs> Pretty easy. Pretty <laughs> easy. Yeah. And uh, need the uh, capital. Bangor. Uh, oh, that's good. Bangor. <laughs> yes. yes. Correct. Oh, I don't know. Uh... Would you like a hint? Sure. They did not have the witch trials there. Salem. Salem is correct. Yeah. Yes. Thank you very much. I'd always get those confused because people would be like, I'm from Salem, and I'd re- I think Massachusetts right away. I always think cigarettes. And I think we're coming down yeah. uh, to the wire here. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Salem are ready? cigarettes. Beaver. Montana. What is the nickname for the state of Montana, Rob? Another tough nickname. Cow country. No. Big sky country. Incorrect. Damn it. Is there a clue? Is there a clue in the offing? Yes, here's your clue. Thank you. Arr. <laughs> the pirate state. <laughs> no, think think deeper than that. Buccaneer. No. Ah. Uh, need a lot of buzzers here. Uh, All right, here we go. What do pirates look for, Rob? Booty. It's the booty state. You mallet head. <laughs> it's the treasure state. Oh, the treasure. Yeah, and if you've Oscar, been there, you know that to be true. Now, Oscar, you watch uh, Yellowstone. Yellowstone and he's always what going is- to some town that he hates. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking hate it. Excuse me. He <laughs> hates going. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he's like, I don't want to go to Shyanaya. Why? And I'm like, no, what no, is he talking no, but about? You got, you got the A in there. Yes. You got the A in there. Oh, God. Oh. And then the senator is always talking about he needs to make friends in Washington because she's leaving the town. And uh, the capital of 
Helena. Helena. Ah, oh, Helena. That's what Helena. it is. Yeah. Mont- what a jerk. Uh, Helena. John Hanna. Dutton does not like working. He does in another Helena. No. difficult nickname, Rob. Spiewak, the nickname for the state of Idaho. No, it's easy. The potato state. That is incorrect. All right, is there a clue? Huh? Is there a clue, Maestro? It's what I refer to you as every day on the show. You are a... Oh, what is the best part of the show state? <laughs> Close. <laughs> what? No. Um, You'll never get it. I won't. I pass. Tony, you want to try? Uh, uh, Utah. He's <laughs> Idaho, Utah. Stroked out. Yeah. The gem state. Yeah, you're a gem. You're Close. a gem. Gem. <laughs> gem. That's, that's lame. Oscar. It's Boise. Capital of it's Idaho. Boise. Thank you. Very Thank good. You. Uh, that's good. We got to get a ding when we do that. Thank you. I know it's hard to push for me. Got it. This. No, no. I, I applaud your intelligence. <laughs> we are, we're coming down. Have we done Hawaii? No. no. Uh, Rob, easy one. What is the uh, nickname for the state of Hawaii? The Lone Star State. No. Uh, the uh, <laughs> The Aloha State. That is correct, Rob Spiewak. It's on the license plate. And another easy one. Uh, what is the capital of the state of uh, Hawaii? Hawaii. Hawaii. Yeah, you know where the islands not are. Not Maui. Definitely not Maui. That's an island. Waikiki. Yeah. Waikiki is in... Waikiki Beach is in this municipality. Mm-hmm. Don't you scream that when you look at Facebook sometimes, <laughs> Mike? Waikiki. Why, Why Kiki? Kiki, <laughs> Kiki <Kay. laughs> All the way with Kiki it's the, it's the big island. Uh, huge. It's Honolulu. Jesus Christ. Uh, Ever heard of it? Cripes. Cripes. Yes. I, I hold in my hand the last two, I believe. Woo! This is so All right, here we go. This is a big place. Yeah. Uh, Rob, what is the nickname of uh, California? The Golden State. That is correct. And uh, Oscar, you should know this. One of our favorite places. What is the capital of California? The capital of California. Oh, no. Come this on. This is embarrassing. Well, I know By the it's, way, it's up north. Sacramento. Sacramento is correct. Yes. Congratulations. You know why I know? Why? Well done. You're a sad gloon. Oh, that's true. He lives in Sacramento, doesn't he? <laughs> in baskets. <laughs> I hold in my hand, ladies and gentlemen. Yay! The last state. Yay! Rob Spiewak. Go. What is the nickname for the state of Arizona? Arizona. If you need a hint, I um I will take a hint, please. A uh the nickname involves a geographical feature. The desert state? <laughs> That's incorrect. Anyone pony? Uh the the sandy bitch. What's Sandy? Sandy Bitch is not correct. You know, you should have stayed with Lo- right. Lone Star. You should have just turned your mic off. <laughs> Oscar lived there. I bet he knows the nickname. No, yeah, I know, yeah, I know I the capital. My son, when we were doing this, said, remember the donkeys go down there. Oh, the Grand Canyon State? The Grand there Canyon State is correct. Very good. I never and understood Oscar, that when I saw that place. And Oscar, mm. the... Uh, the capital of Phoenix. the state of Arizona. Phoenix. That is absolutely Phoenix. right, ladies and gentlemen. Yay. Congratulations. Yay. Oh. Be honest. How many of these did you know? All right, because you have both failed miserably, Yeah. you will both be machine gunned now. Oh, <laughs> no. What's going to happen Mike, on, on Squid Game. How yes. many of these did you know when you were quizzing your son? I, I bet you knew most the of the I, capitals. Well, yeah, the capitals course, were easy, but I brought in the uh, the, the these... The the nicknames are just all over the place. It's tough, but to be and cl- but to are, be and fair, here's the difficult thing: there are multiples of them too, because not all of them are official, the definitive, but the yeah. ones that uh, he has to have, and that's tough. To Tupper's be fair, those those state nicknames are really going to come in handy. Well, I mean, I think it's nice knowing. It's good I, for I, cocktail I, I, parties. Criticize the curriculum that you don't understand. It, that's typical you. It's no. always the. It's always. I love the, the capitals. Fault. I love the capitals, but I don't know that the nicknames are necessarily important. Well, Might be an exercise. Why, why? What if somebody you're at a truck stop says, so "Welcome to the Grand Canyon State." I said, "Great to be what, in Arizona." What does that exercise? I mean, I guess what what are you looking down upon? For the exercise. He's looking down upon the fact that he didn't get the correct answers most of the time. <laughs> no, it's not so much that. Of I just, course it's that. That's all it is. No, I now I am, as I close in on 52 <laughs> years on this mortal coil, I've never been called upon for state nicknames until this very day. 
There you didn't you have go. to do that in, in, in uh, what, the middle school, I guess? No, it was uh, fifth grade that we did our state's projects. Oh, I don't know what, what... There are some on here, I will be honest with you, Yeah. Uh, that... Mrs. Uh, would the Weary. beehive state? Would the beehive state be a uh, Utah because it's shaped like a beehive? They have, they have a the average hairdo, Mike. No, when I looked it up, they actually had this uh, not monument, but I'll tell you what it is. A great hairdo. Well, I wish we, I wish it would come back. You, uh, you know? know, Mike. Once if Amy did. Winehouse passed away, <laughs> if it came back, I'd grow my hair out. It's terrible. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, Mrs. Weary was my fifth grade teacher, and she made beehive us do all the stands. Mm. Oh, Beehive. That was a hell of a hairdo. Okay, two know. sculptures. Um, oh, no, this is not Jesus Christ. Salt Lake City, Beehive State. Why is uh, Salt Lake City called the Beehive State? When Brigham well, no, Young... Salt Lake City is the city. Why is Utah called the I'm sorry, Beehive? Wal- he's wal- he's wal- rolling. Wal- yeah, you know what I'm talking about. When, uh, when, Brig- when Brigham Young and the Latter-day Saints arrived in Salt Lake Valley in July of 1847, Young chose the name De- D-E-S-E-R, Deseret, for the new home and the beehive as its emblem. He chose it. Oh. Bring, you mean, uh, Brigham Young. The Mormon dude? Yes. And that's what it says on his head. Brigham Young. The Mormon dude. The Mormon dude. And the beehive yeah. as its emblem, symbolizing the kind of cooperative work that would be required to make this Isn't desert that fun? bloom. Isn't that fun? That's cool. Starting with the, it's academic. Yeah. That's the end of the round. I, I love, thought it was know, founded by a Wu-Tang Clan member. I think it's academic, and they it's now it's it's impossible to find. But in its day, it was the greatest, one of the greatest written game shows. It was like Jeopardy good because they were really taxing those high school kids, and yeah, they have they it, have one the in every state. Production values were so so cheap. But isn't that charming? Wasn't that sort of the charming part about it? I suppose there was a certain charm to it, but uh, you know. Oh, by the way, they're doing uh, high school reunion jeopardy mm. this week and they bring back i think high school champions who are now in college and the most fun is to see you know when you make that tra- transition you go to uh julia in yeah. her freshman year of high school oh my and then God. see her yes. now the transition in those short years is oh, ta- really amazing tattoos way, alone I- I have to say about your daughter, who we spent some time with uh, when we were up in Washington. Yeah. Uh, what, a, what, a, what a wonderfully kind and generous and uh, lovely lady she has turned Thank out you. to be. Thank you. And Very she proud really of her. was, you know, to, to, to come to that uh, celebration of Mark Riddell was really, I, if I didn't say that before, I'll say it again. But a very nice, I thought, I assumed, since she was part of that, since she was there with you two, you and Carrie, that. She was friends with uh, Rachel and Sammy. She was not. No. She was just there to be supportive yeah. of you and your friend. And uh, uh, that's, that's that's super you gotta, sweet. She had, you got a good she, one there. You know, she's one of the most amazing people on this earth. And, really, um, really terrific. And it's great to see so that much. kind of uh, sensitivity. Uh, I'd like to do a little pivot here. I have a son too, academic. but you yeah. Know. You, <laughs> how's, how is he doing, by the way? Um, his grades are remarkably good this year, this semester, and he actually pulled out an amazing ninety-seven on his Spanish midterm, which has been Ooh, which has been easy yeah, too. a cancer on his GPA uh, for the whole. Time. He'll be home next week because he can't afford to go anywhere for spring break. So um, I would well, love to have him. Come, that way. I would love to have him come in if I can get him out of bed. Have sure. him come in one morning because he still hasn't seen the uh, the facility. Mm. Maybe so. next week on the show we can cover uh, a little bit of spring break because it's spring break I wonder, forever. I wonder if it, <laughs> I wonder if it's still what it was. Probably kids love to party. Yeah, but, uh, I'll remember but in I COVID know. they didn't care either. Yeah, that was one yeah. of the first big uh, COVID disasters. Man, oh man. In the Ozarks. I mean, it's just a sea yeah. of, yeah. oh, God, a sea of underachievers. I swear to God. I went, you know, but I didn't do a, I didn't do the traditional, uh, you know, hang out on the balcony and try to kill myself stuff, you know. Yeah. I mean, it's really, I, I, I'd, be, I'd be curious where, what is the state of spring break now? And I know that, uh, you know, you've got some information on it, right? Don't you? I do. As far as, uh, you do? Yes. As far as Oscar. spring break? Uh, uh well, yeah, like, can we dedicate a whole break to that, sure. please? Yeah. Can we do that? 100%. I'd really like to do that. I want to ask you very briefly, before we go to break here, about Pete Davidson, uh, who recently, you, you saw, what, the video or the news story I saw, of this? I'm a big TMZ guy, Mike. I'm not um, you know, ashamed to say that because I want to know what's going on. I would love to see an episode where you're sitting in the newsroom with Harvey. Well, sometimes I get my mug and watch a show because, you know, 
actually, he's a trendsetter. If he has a, a certain type of mug, people will buy that mug that he's holding. Yes. Isn't that crazy? Pete Davidson. No. No, Harvey Levin. <laughs> Harvey Levin. Oh, really? Yeah, yes. Let's see what mine says. Yeah, it's funny. Oh, this is lovely. What does it say? It says, let me, let me zoom on. Huh? Oh, my God. Love begins here. at home. Oh, it's nice. It looks like yeah, someone lovely. tried to burn, burn Yeah, well, out there's the, some oh. coffee dripping on oh. it, but that's fine. <laughs> Huh. There's some coffee yeah, droplets. Okay, okay. Well, I was just D- explaining to Oscar. He's, he's a me- messy baby. No, he's Oscar a messy brought it baby. Up. I'm not a messy coffee drip. Sometimes, you know. All right, I'll point it out. Since the stroke, <laughs> the uh, the coffee drips down the cup because <laughs> it's weak. <laughs> Your lip. It's, it's weakened. Uh, do you know the name of yeah, the Sue, starlet that he is now involved Sue with? Sue E. Wonders. And her how- nickname is the Beehive Girlfriend. I have this question about Pete Davidson. Yes. Let me- he must be stopped. Okay, it's another starlet that yeah, he's with. Yeah, he was just in a, a film with her. It's just, uh, he was? Yes. Different so type for him, though. Connection. Huh? Well, guys, I think we were wrapped up. First, we were wrapped up in the the fact that he had, uh, you know. Kardashian. No, that he had a, um, what's that battering ram that the police used to knock down? A battering doors, ram. Right, yeah. He had a battering ram in his pants, and then so we were all jealous about that because the Kanye West went no, on. No, I was not. I, I was jealous about out. that. I was. I am proud of my Irish mushroom. Okay, well, I was jealous about that. Not breaking down any doors though. When you have another man telling another man, I can pick a lock, <laughs> which is what Kanye West did to Char- Charlemagne the God. I can on point the, at a on, doormat on the Breakfast Club show. Yes, when he was asking. No, this is on a phone call that Charlemagne talked about. He called this gentleman and said, you have to help me take down Pete Davidson. He goes, hey, Pete's my friend. He's been on here a bunch of times. Why do you want me to take him down? He goes, why are you letting this, I'm paraphrasing, this white boy with a 10-inch battering ram uh, take take our women, take our take everything from us, right? So right then, I didn't hear anything about the racial undertones or how crazy Kanye was. All I heard was battering ram. So, so uh, it's been because- confirmed by a third party. Yeah, but but the, the the point is that I get it. But really, if that was the sole criteria, mm. uh, and if uh, sensitivity and sweetness was, was is what I've also read about him was the sole criteria, you know, I don't know. I believe, as you have stated on this show in the past, it's a playbook. Well, he's yeah, of course. got a playbook. Yes. Mike, this he's is got a This is great, but he's got to have a system. At this point, he, he should be selling, um, you know, infomercials because it's so foolproof for him. This is what happens. He someone breaks up, he slides into their DMs, and that's a text message for you old people essentially through social yes. media. And he says, "Hey, like I hope everything's going well. I wish you the best of luck, you know." That what he does? Yeah, something along those lines or like it'll never be the same, but it'll get better. Uh, right. And then, boom, they're yeah, like, oh, right. how sweet. Yeah. Here is, and then, boom, picture of the battering ram, right? So what? No. The, um, this you mean is, he this, sends a this, deep this, pic? I, I don't know, but I think this is how the, this is a, the shock and all. It's a sweetness and shock and all right afterwards. All right, I may be naive here. I may be naive. All right. I've certainly had, uh, throughout my career, multiple sex experts on the show, and I've read a great deal about size. I have one of the consistent themes of size has been uh, it doesn't really matter. Okay, that's what you heard. Your Is that a life. lie? Is that's that a lie. lie? It's a lie. So the bigger, the better. No, not you can't be like gross big, but you if, can't be like yeah. uh, anomaly. Yeah, big. but you don't want to be driving around in a limousine, but you know, a I nice town car. Yeah. Pe- Mike, I don't think know why. Who, who, why would you ever believe that it's the motion of the ocean, not the, you know? No, no. I think that I understand that if you're super it's poor man, uh, you know, if you're, if you're, <laughs> what do you mean this poor? I don't need your sympathy. <laughs> I've done fine, thank you very much. He's done very well, and I've fathered three children. Yes, yes. I have thank zero you. children. I have to say this: not that zero. I wonder if you know, because look at the guy. The guy has yeah, what I used to call anus eyes. You know what? I, he's I have got a theory. Anus eyes. I have a little bit of a theory, and this goes way back. But when America was at war in World War II, all well, of the women. No, but this, this, this let me, let me well, I don't make this racial. Please, when he said for love up, God. So. Okay, let Marco, me, get me a goddamn coffee, please. Let me, I text you ten times. Let me bring it to the future. But 
in World War II, Frank Sinatra it was when he was at his ultimate with his female fans. They yeah. were screaming. They were okay. going crazy. And they liked the emaciated? Psychi- psychologists and psychiatrists said they felt sorry for him. They wanted to take care of him. Frank because, Sinatra? Yep. Yeah, look at pictures yeah. of oh, him. When he, was, when, he was, when he was a heartthrob, he was a waif-like. He almost like looked ill. Yes, old women bones. like Go skinny guys. They, they All my like, life, women love skinny guys. They don't. And, really skinny guys. Yeah. <laughs> well, no. well, it well, doesn't uh, work. Wait, wait, really skinny <laughs> guys. <laughs> <laughs> it does not work. With an Bonnie. ounce of confidence. <laughs> With an ounce of confidence. This guy doesn't have confidence. Right. But if you look at Frank Sinatra back then, all skin and bones, sort of uh, meek a little bit, and you know, like aw oh, gee, aw oh, shucks. He wasn't the Sinatra he would become, and Not also no, and also a legendary member for Frank Sinatra. And so I think that that's so gross. Well, that's you gross that. to say that. Well, you, you were talking. So about, I didn't say battering ram. I don't that's know what's funny. Going to say. At least that's I mean, funny. That's like Penthouse member. from the nineteen seventy. He took right, Mike, out his throbbing member. Mike, that is name so and address with hell. But. That, I think man, that Pete on. Davidson has modernized that yuck, word. Yuck on you, sir. That okay. is such a nasty word used in like, gr- like erotic in literature. Like 1960s literatica. So <laughs> what I'm saying I'm is this. Bob Gucciotti <laughs> Spiewak. <laughs> <laughs> the garbage All right. kids. All right. I'm but sorry. Sorry. what I'm, I'm saying is that on. this is the same situation <laughs> plus 70 years. Guys. Hey, where's my members only jacket? <laughs> <laughs> my, you have to take my, it. Well, yeah. just, just, let me just share this. Yeah, Ra- wrap it up. Okay. Yes, my, you can wrap it up. My good, uh, not good friend, an associate of mine, who was just a famous coxman. He said to me at one point, he's "Can like, we do, can we say that? No, you can say a famous it's, swordsman. It's better than member. It is much better. I think it's so, a tie. So, <laughs> no, member is gross. Member. I, I said, <laughs> I said, what's your deal? And he's like, hey, like if you're if you if you if you're taking care of your girlfriend in, in uh you know at home doing clapping pushups then make sure she tells her friends and i was like why would i want her to tell my her friends about our sex life he goes because they'll get curious and when you break up you can sleep with their friends smart very sensitive too <laughs> yes i love this I show said, <laughs> i love this I show said, we started uh, out with okay. a uh, we started out with an elementary school quiz and yes. look what we're talking about now yeah that's it and your friend uh, was a, uh, that's why he was a swordsman. Oh, yeah, yeah he's been divorced five times. <laughs> Which state has the nickname the Tell Your Friend State? <laughs> we'll be right back. Good news right here. It happens every day on the highways and byways of America. There was an accidento. A bad mm, yes. accidento. With scenes mm. straight out from a Hollywood movie. I think so. You so. clipped it and flipped like yeah. you'd see in a movie. Exactly. Like a stunt driver. <laughs> The real reason these mishaps happen? Listening to inferior podcasts. I was just driving and listening to a podcast. Ooh! Okay. And then you went bang bang! And I went, <laughs> went comedy bang roll. Don't let this happen to you or a loved one. Not many people flip a car and live to yes. tell about it. The Mike O'Mara Show. Share it with a friend because laughing helps to save lives. You'll flip for it. I think flip is nice. I, with yeah. two peas. Uh, the devil made me. Get it where you download your favorite podcast or at Mike omerashow.com what a klutz Clots. That's why we call uh, the new sound town is the flip side. Yes. That's what we call it, the flip side. Uh, hey, let's face it. Trends and fads come and go, especially when it comes to health and wellness. Noom is not a fad. I was with Noom this morning. I log my weight there every day. Mm. They have a great food database. They use psychology, not trends, to help you make intentional and sustainable choices that are aligned with your values and weight loss goals. Noom allows you to build more sustainable habits and behaviors. The program helps you understand choices and why you have cravings. Whatever your health goals are, Noom focuses on progress instead of perfection. And folks, I can tell you from my own personal experience, you need a little help. Mm. Sure. You need to understand that if you have something bad, it's going to probably lead to you having something else bad. It motivates you. It stimulates yeah. you sure. to get that, uh, that that desire for the next are chocolate Are you still chip keeping cookie. your log on Noom? I've kept my log uh, for... A you know there was a long period of time that food I log kept my for those log, of you at home. My uh, well, I'm talking about my weight log. I'm sorry, weight log. Okay, so all kids love me, log. Let me go to Noom. 
By the Ask way, Pete that's, uh, there's new Stop right it. there. I'm going to open it up. Okay. All right. I'm it's an application it on his telephone, smartphone. And uh, you'll see a little chart that I have here. Yep. Can you see mm-hmm. that? I got my chart, and let me see. We're going to go October, September. This is only the only reverse hockey stick I've ever uh, July, April, witnessed. February. I thought it was a hockey app. December yet. of last year. You want the reverse hockey stick. Reverse hockey. February. Uh, it goes December. down. Down. Uh, down. A couple of years. I've been on this yeah. for a couple of years. Yeah. And uh, I don't mind telling you, I started my uh, little journey at, uh, let's uh, get it, 301. Uh, a long, long time ago, I was in the threes. Not yeah. happy. Not happy. Almost about four. That. Uh, well, no, he's, he's so untrue. far depths from four. First time numbers, uh, you pump, lose an average of fifteen pounds after being active in the program. <laughs> Mike weeks. Wade, three hundred one, used to live in the three hundred one. Everything I, I love, has changed. <laughs> I love Noom weight because it works. I hope they don't mind this commercial. Mm. Noom helped Oscar. Uh, I am skinnier. I am using Noom. Yeah. Uh, over 20 pounds, amazing results. Stop chasing health trends and build sustainable, healthy habits. With I might carry that with me all day. Almost 400. Uh, Noom's psychology-based <laughs> approach. Sign up for your trial he today. He couldn't even see 400. I've he seen couldn't it. even get in the car. You've <laughs> seen 400? Well, I've, I've got closer than 301. <laughs> N O O M dot com slash T M O S to sign up for your trial today. There it is. And check out Noom's first ever book, The New Mindset, a deep dive oh, hi, into yes. the psychology of behavior change. Available now wherever books are sold. Thank you very much. Yeah, almost four. From the four corners of the World Wide Web he rounds up. and into your digital device. It's what you need to know. Such a lie, by the way. It's the homepage. Oh, good lord. Yes, <laughs> Couldn't get into the car. Uh, anyway, let's start today uh, with Keanu Reeves. There was a fungus-killing bacteria that was discovered. Every time I hear fungus-killing, I think of that uh, show, The Last of Us, yes. on HBO, uh. Uh, because it's all about kind of a fungus, and fungi, fung, fungi yeah. are everywhere and very dangerous. Uh, there was a fungus-killing bacteria discovered last month in Germany uh, that was named after Keanu Reeves. Scientists said they named it... Uh, Ke- Keanomycins, because, quote, the lipopeptides kill so efficiently that we name them after him because he, too, is extremely deadly in his roles. <laughs> that sounds German, doesn't it? Does. It does. Uh, well, during an Ask Me Anything forum on Reddit on Saturday, a user asked Keanu what he thought about that, and he seemed pretty into it. He said, quote, they should have called it John Wick. But that's pretty cool and surreal for me. But thanks, uh, scientists people. I can get you. Thanks, scientists people. Uh, good luck and uh, thank you for helping us. And uh, sometimes I have to say, and I don't want to get off on a whole thing here. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I think that Keanu is a nice guy thing is a cultivated image. I don't. Sometimes I think. You I don't. don't because I okay. think that it comes from so many different corners and random There's places. There's too many creep shots of him on the subway. Yeah. Like, yeah. Where he's just there normally and then... He's just like hating his life, and then some fan says hi, and the picture that the selfie of the same person that took a creep shot of him, right? Which is you know just a picture that he doesn't. So know you think he's legit? Taken. I do. Yeah, he just has a smile on his face because he's like he lives to be famous. All right, that's yeah. he was on the subway. Actually, he was going to another stop to fight fungus. Uh, (laughs) Hayden Panettiere took four years off acting in order to work on her mental, physical, and spiritual health. She told Women's Health Magazine that since giving birth to her daughter in 2014, she didn't feel like her body belonged to her. That's interesting. So last year, she got a breast reduction, and here's her quote. I don't think there's anything wrong with somebody who wants to tweak something if it makes them feel more confident. That's all I have to say about it. My confidence is back. Hayden was also on Good Morning America yesterday to promote her acting comeback in Scream 6. Good for her. Which uh, hits theaters Friday. Uh, She's returning as her character Kirby from Scream 4. Didn't Mm -hmm. get a chance to see. uh, I've seen the entire Scream catalog. They're all great. It's a fun, Uh, fun movies to watch. She told Michael Strahan on that show that she willed Kirby back into existence by calling Scream executives to remind them her character might still be alive. That's, That's cool. That's my favorite part Smart. of the story. Yeah. Hey, you could bring her back. Yeah, Kirby! Uh, it's pretty obvious from Chris Rock's Netflix special over the weekend that he has not forgiven Will Smith. Mm. 
but apparently Will is trying to make things right. A so-called source says, quote, he's tried unsuccessfully to make amends in the best way he could with Chris. Well, the best way he could would have been making amends that night. Uh, but you know what? He screwed that up too. People screw up. I believe in forgiveness. Uh, let's go on here. Uh, beyond that, family is important to him, and uh, he leaned on them. The source adds that Will, feel, Will feels he has become a better person since then. Quote, he is better, but uh, still remorseful. Well, uh, I don't know what that really says. Does that say anything about it? This anything? does not it's, help his cause. No, this is, again, Will Smith clumsily trying to control the narrative. Yeah. Yeah, you just got to say I'm an a-hole. Because you screwed up. And when we I don't screw care up, I if tell you're better. people I'm an a-hole. Yeah. You do you do it right away. He's had a year to think about this. He knew that this was coming out. Mm -hmm. He probably had his own people figure out what was going to be said, and it had, it's happened. Yeah, he had to answer so it. So you have and to I answer. And I thought, uh, once again, not to pound on uh, Chris Rock, but I thought it was ham-handed the way he dealt with the subject, with the whole Jada open relationship crap. Mm -hmm. I, just thought, I, I just thought the way he handled it An was, entanglement. It was just weird. <clears throat> it didn't make sense. It wasn't, it wasn't well written. That's yeah. the point I want to make. I didn't like it. 43-year-old Robert Siegfried. I love that name. Hi. Siegfried. Ever since I was a huge fan of his partner, Roy. Robert Siegfried uh, lives in southern Wisconsin, and, well, he hasn't had a ton of luck uh, with online dating. So he recently rented a billboard to find himself a wife. He lives in Janesville, Wisconsin, about 70 miles outside Milwaukee. The billboard says, Date Robert, oh. colon, Wisconsin's number one eligible bachelor. And there's a picture of him <laughs> in a cowboy hat. Nice. <laughs> belt buckle and sunglasses. It says he's looking for a local honest woman. And there's a phone number that you can call or text to leave him a message. He's planning to rent more billboards over the next few weeks if necessary. No word on how many dates he's gotten, but he has run into a few hurdles, and let me tell you why. Okay. Uh, first, a reporter interviewed him, and he asked her out during the television segment. Hungry! Uh, seemed like a joke, <laughs> but uh, she's much uh, younger, so it appeared just a tad creepy. Yeah. This part... Might be more of a deal breaker, though. The station covering the story felt the need to list one final detail mm. oh, at good. the end of their piece. They noted that someone filed a restraining order against Robert uh, last year. Uh, no details on that particular factoid, but they don't have the details. And we know it's a four-year restraining order that's apparently still in effect. Oh. And one last thing, he faced a disorderly conduct charge last year. Both these things mm. happened last year, so we're not sure exactly. Uh, but I, I do is. appreciate the fact he's bringing back the billboard because that's an advertising medium that we miss. <laughs> yeah, you know what? To get us more uh, views, we should just go up on a billboard. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, you how had one in Manassas. It's very Baltimore of us. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. It's uh, Hello. easy to tell how old you are. You uh, you know what it says on your birth certificate and uh, your license and you know your age and your birthday and all that. You know that if you put that many candles on a cake, uh, they'd have to call the fire marshal. <laughs> <laughs> I'm better but remorseful. But, and I can speak to this more than anyone on the show, you don't feel that old. Uh, very few of us do, it says. According to a study of 1,500 people, we tend to think and feel that we're about 20% younger than we are. So if you're 30, uh, that means in your mind, you're 24. If you're 40, you're in your early 30s in your head. If you're in your 50s, you feel more like you're in your late 30s. If you're in your 60s, you have accepted the fact that you will soon die. No, 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 no. What is, no, your, what is your actual age, Mike? My actual age is 6'3". 63. 63. So, and today, when I woke up, we have a new coffee machine where we don't Keurig it anymore. We make a big pot nice. that cooks uh, the coffee up automatically, and we get up in the morning. I was informed first thing this morning at approximately 5.50 a.m., Mrs. O'Mear informed me that I set the coffee maker, put the water in, and did not put coffee in the little funnel. <laughs> Yes. Oh, the filter, she me. was empty. Uh, Mike, but do you feel 
50. Because, I mean, with rounding up, 20% of 63 is 50. I don't Off spend of it, I mean. much time thinking. I feel vastly younger than people I play golf with. That's how I have to look at. I feel uh, like I'm one of the youngest guys in the room, and I'm not. I, uh, you know, there are guys in their 40s and their 50s, and then their 60s. But how, 70s, does, how does it how does it mess with your mind when you say that you deal with 80 year olds that are very spry I and more athletic? Look up to them, and I like where I live. Okay. Although the long term game plan for us, and we're realistic about this, is not necessarily living out my days here. I probably will return to New England. That's probably what will happen. Uh, why do we feel this way so much younger? Psychologists have come up with all sorts of reasons, but the most reasonable one, we form so many memories as kids, teenagers, and early adults that we can't wrap our minds around that era being so far in the past. I totally agree agreed. with that. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. You, you think of it in, uh, you know, in Guys, certain terms. I Speaking still of- feel, I mean, I'm 51. I feel like I'm 80. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. I have to. I have to go do that advertiser call. Excuse me. I just wanted to oh. jump in. My apologies. It's nine o'clock. Oh, I thought you were. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm I sorry. thought you were leaving at the end of the show. Yeah, I thought it was at nine thirty. Oh, I did as well. It's at nine o'clock. Oh, You're waiting right. for me. Thank you. Hey, when he says advertisers, Appreciate he gets it. to go. Thank you. That's right. And yes, go sorry. he does. Uh, Pony, will you and, kill his headphones for me? Uh, anyway, that's uh, so. That's it. I do feel younger, but I don't yeah. dwell on the subject matter. Yeah. And now a little something, something. Two idiots near Atlanta. Recently stole a bunch of stuff from a Sam's Club, so much uh, they could barely fit it all in their car. They walked off with several gaming systems and other random stuff, like electric toothbrushes, super expensive for the size. But cops were able to catch them uh, about 10 miles down the road when they had to stop to recharge their Tesla. Oh, you see, this is, you got a plan. Teslas can take 30 minutes or more to fully charge, so... uh, when you uh, have to do that, like you're going to steal something, you plan ahead. They didn't. The stuff they stole was worth $8,700. So they're facing uh, felony theft charges. They also had several guns and a few bags of weed. So uh, cops tacked on a charge of possession of mar- marijuana with intent to distribute and possession of a firearm while committing a crime. Hey, when your car depreciates, you have to make up the difference somehow. <laughs> Tesla joke. We got to take a break. Uh, when we come back, something I know, something we will talk about. I'd like to talk about commercial fishing. Good. We're talking okay. about the fish going away fish. in Alaska. And once again, everybody's appearing to be <gasps> surprised. We'll talk about that when we come back. You are listening to the Mike O'Mara Show. People all over are talking about a new way of pampering themselves. The Brazilian. I thought it had something to do with beekeeping. Introducing a new you, feeling young and vibrant. Dirk Aglow. Why can I not get the name Dirk out of my head? Hey, ladies. Let's get you looking radiant. Here's an unsolicited testimonial about Dirk Aglow. Ladies, let me give you the truth. That Dirk Glow sh- will mess you <laughs> up. Well... It ain't for everyone. <laughs> if you really want to pamper yourself, check out the real thing. Check out Derm Glow Skin to see what Carla can do for you. She is a pure artist in her field. Oh, by the way, men need not apply. Oh, even though, Derm. Even- for products or consultation, visit DermGlowSkin.com today. And by the way, hi, Carla. Gross. Uh, welcome, uh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> welcome back to the Mike O'Mara Show. This podcast is sponsored by Groove Life. It's 2023. Are you still using the same belt from 20, uh, 2003? Let me zoom in. Look at that buckle. Beautiful. That's the old glory belt buckle, and that's uh, from Groove Light. Uh, if you're still using the same belt from 03, now is the time to update your belt game. The Groove Life belt has proprietary webbing. Now take a look at this. Look at that. It's, it's amazing. It's stretchy, stretchy. Yeah. It's engineered with just the right amount of stretch. And Groove Life designed the world's baddest buckle that snaps using rare earth neodymium. Their magnets set in an aluminum alloy, and they're fantastic. I know you have the old glory, but there are dozens that you can choose from. Even yeah, superhero uh, belts. They're very, very cool. Very cool. They have a no BS warranty. Uh, the Groove belt is the last belt you'll ever need. And it ain't just belts. I also will reach in and get out my wallet because I've got a wallet from Groove Life, too. I use these every day. Yeah. I love the product. By the way, 
As far as golfers are concerned, best golf belt I've ever had in my life. Uh, rings, watch bands as well, AirPod cases, much, much more. I love, love, love Groove Life. You will, too. It's time to bring your belt into the 21st century. Head to GrooveLife.com slash TMOS and use promo code TMOS for 20% off all Groove Life products. That's the best offer you'll find, but you have to use my code TMOS for 20% off your order. One last time, that's promo code TMOS for 20% off your order. Just click on the button on our website and check them out. I love them, love them, love them, and I especially love this one because I don't do the whole patriotic. This is such beautiful subtlety. Yeah. Uh, It's really cool. I like it. Uh, We were going to talk about fishing. I want to talk to Rob about eBay, though, because uh, as you know, Rob, I have been... uh, just obsessed with watch uh, vloggers. Yes. I've been obsessed with watch websites. I've been obsessed with a lot of it. You hear a lot about eBay. Now, I don't know if you remember from long ago. Oh, that, yes. <laughs> do you remember? Do yeah. Do you remember the product? There was a tanning bed. A long time ago. Thank you for remembering that. A long time ago. Uh, while, it was, while it was an issue, we weren't allowed to talk about it. It was horrible. And uh, the ex Mrs. O'Mara was uh, ripped off to the tune of many thousands of dollars for a tanning bed that the money was sent for and not received. And it was just a whole big thing. We ended up having somebody uh, extradited, uh, which was cool. Yeah. And then the person got to walk because of that fabulous Commonwealth's attorney in uh, <laughs> Prince William County. Good job. Yay. But anywho, uh, I have ever since then perceived eBay uh, as the land of, uh, you know... Sketchiness? Dodge City and scamminess. Yeah. And you were talking before the show that, you know, you wanted to talk about it yeah. because something's going down Well, you. what happened is, is I was hot on eBay like maybe eight or ten years ago when it was new-ish, and I purchased some things and I sold some things. It has changed so much now. It's more like... There's very little auctioning and bidding anymore. It's more like someone goes in and sets a huge price and then a make an offer price. And so it takes a lot of the fun out of it. And I did like the fun part of watching stuff be bid on. Well, as I told you before, Carrie is making me sell a lot of my stuff. And uh, I've been playing along now that I need a down payment in the near future. So we're trying to, you know, for the car. Yeah, trying to clear out some stuff. Any uh, progress on that? I spoke way? to the two people with the insurance company yesterday, and th- this is the favorite. The if <laughs> hey, a pony. Is there some noise in back when Rob is talking? Yeah, it's it's construction work. Is that what's a jackhammering? It might be drilling. Sounds like yeah, drilling. It's a little right. drilling. Yeah. Oh, good. Well, that uh, shows the microphones are sensitive. So, uh, what did they say to you? Uh, there's a if State Farm had a state motto, it would be oh yeah, seven to ten business days. So I on still everything. on everything. So they still, I don't even know that they've gotten it out of the record yard yet for State Farm to look at it. They nobody knows anything. Nobody knows anything. So all you can do is call every day and ask what the project pro, uh, progress wow. is. Luckily, Carrie's been able to borrow a car for a few days a week, and she's been. Uh, do taking, you have rental car coverage? No, that was one thing we did not have. So. Oh. Man, she's man. got a she's got a teacher that lives in our neighborhood, so she can get a ride to work. She can Uber home, and a friend of hers has yeah, been loaning those college kids that they don't need autos for a week or so. Well, yeah, but I mean? then we got to, then we'd have to get them back up here, back down here. Yeah, you know, the, you're right. I get it. so that so they're they're not totally dicking you around, but it's not a no. It's they're not, not easy they're slog. Not expediting. I've I've crunched <laughs> bad bad use of words. I've crunched the numbers a few times, and I think I'll be okay. But they need to. You know, do the exam and stroke the this check. This is the sound of Rob crunching the numbers. All the numbers are upside down. It's amazing. Uh, so yeah, I, I don't go on eBay. I'm, I'm just afraid of it based on my personal experience. I, I browse eBay just to see, in the past, I've browsed it to see what the potential value of some of my things are, but I n- didn't participate. And now that I've gotten into it, I realize that it's not a good gauge for what things are worth. And so I've listed some stuff, and I would think the first things to go would be, you know, they'd be out the door in a second. Nobody touches them. Like some of my microphones, some albums that are beautiful, vintage albums, like 
first European pressings of Rolling Stones albums, Creedence Clearwater Revival albums, some Elvis stuff that you cannot get anymore. What about the FB uh, marketplace? Facebook, we do that, but that's only for local stuff. And a lot of times- Might work. We, do, we have used it, as a matter of fact. We uh, mm-hmm. Computer monitors, stuff that you don't want to ship is best to do on Facebook Marketplace. But I'm saying it might be an alternative. There might be somebody local that uh, might be interested so in we, it. So we do keep an eye on that. However, the thing that blows my mind is what sells big. Of all the albums I listed, and I'm talking about really, really great stuff, the one that was immediately bid on was by the 80s metal band Kicks. <laughs> that's it well that one and then kicks vixen is another hot mover <laughs> oh and i'm my like god what is this two ozzy osborne albums are in there yeah. f- are up up well, up 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 I, sure. hey I yeah hugged. there it is yeah but Metal. i don't that i don't understand i've got one of the most beautiful useful glorious microphones ever built that i have priced about a thousand dollars. I have under no th- sympathy for you on this one. That's your niche. Yeah. Well, That's you know what? Niche. If you're building a recording studio and you want, I mean, to if have you're a- talking watch collectors, coin collectors, yeah. car collectors, I don't think that there is a society of microphone collectors. No, but I don't here's- think it's considered a common collectible. It is not a common collectible, but it is scarce. And here's the thing: is that these are hard to come by, and if you're building a recording studio. This is a great piece of uh, apparatus to have. It's a ribbon mic, and I had it rebuilt. It sounds dynamite. Carrie's used it on this show. It sounds great. Yeah, but Rob, the point is that you know if you're putting stuff up on eBay mm-hmm. and it's not going, it's because people don't want microphones. No, but you see, I hate to break that to you. There, there are a niche amount of people that do. I've sold crappy Three. microphones. You know Three what? from Alaska to Portland, Maine. No, well, you could go to like the, uh, if you go to sites like a reverb.com where they sell used music gear, this stuff sells. But I just but don't understand. But somebody, all right, let me ask you a question. Yeah, they're too busy buying but kicks LPs. Let's do this. All right. Somebody, would people be more interested in your <laughs> useless microphone collection mm-hmm. uh, based on Somebody might want the sound of a certain microphone, or would they be interested based on what you do is put it up on a uh, mantle? Well, it is a thing of beauty, but it is... In your opinion. (laughs) You don't think it's cool to see that microphone? To I see think a beautiful if I went to your house mic. being a broadcaster yeah. and knowing that you are a broadcaster going into your uh, man cave and seeing your microphones, I think it's a novelty. I think it's wonderful. I think I they're don't lovely to look you, at. I don't think that that is... Think about the people that do what we do on any level professionally. It's but it a wouldn't small be, group. But it wouldn't be us. It would be someone who is trying to capture a certain sound or market themselves as a recording studio so that has all these options. So when you do you advertise this works? Yeah. This oh, is I, in work? Are I they have all a, in working order? All but one, yeah. I have um, I have paperwork, actually, from my, when I had this reconditioned from a famous... Ooh, that's a big thing in the watch world, box and papers. Yeah, it is a... Uh, there's a guy who... It means nothing to you, but he is one of the last living employees from RCA in Camden, uh, Pennsylvania, or is that... You know, Camden is just in... New, New Jersey, Jersey, on the other side of Philadelphia. You know, but, as far but he as... Does, he did the rebuild, and he's famous for it. So As far as watches go, there's yeah. another guy now, this guy that runs this place called Luxury Bazaar, yeah. and he's called Roman, and he has uh, got a <laughs> podcast called, a vlog called the... Well, it's a podcast called uh, The Gray Market. I've seen him is, on Secession. It, it's, <laughs> <laughs> there's another Roman. Oh, a different guy. And it's just... All these deals, yes, and p- millions of dollars of these watches, and the f- most fun thing. And I watched the whole thing last night. All these guys, and they all have the slicky boy factor. Sure, all right. Picture a room full of Big O and Dukes and junkies interns. All right, <laughs> that's what this looks like. Okay, right? and all these guys are watch traders. Some of them more successful than right. others. Right. Some of them older guys that own like big time jewelry stores but they're all going in and you watch them negotiate and what it has this would be your thing i would sounds great i know i said to oscar at one point i said we should do this you're the guy that i should do this with because if you studied it yeah you could get that encyclopedic knowledge of watches and the details and these guys look at a watch 
and they can tell you the retail price. Sure. They can tell you the resale price, and they do this over a counter, and it's fascinating. I would love it to really, do that. Really, really I, is. I, you know, I, I come from a background in retail. I would love to do that. It's fascinating, but the thing I wanted to say is you hear eBay. Yes. Uh, I think in both directions. You hear, uh, I bought this at a such and such uh, auction, and then I was able to sell it on eBay for four grand more yep. than it cost. And then you hear other things where uh, I got this on eBay and I got a deal. I think eBay is still the land of opportunity for both buying I and I agree, selling. but I think it's also the it is the land of the idiot in places because when I list something and I see what it sells for and I have sold things, DVDs and things like that, and then I go to Amazon.com or another site, it's still in print and selling for less with free mm-hmm. shipping. So people, I think there's a certain sport about going on eBay and finding what they want and mm-hmm. getting it there as opposed from a big retailer, but that's another mark of the stupid person. And then yeah, the sport for selling your uh, microphones is sit out in the cold and freeze to death. <laughs> no, that is, that is, no, I mean, no. How many do you have up for sale now? Right now, I have uh, one mic up for sale. I've sold two or three garbagey mics, ones that I won't miss, and they went fast. That's the thing I don't understand. They, I no. mean, th- th- so people are buying these mics. What's the biggest profit, uh, profit dollar wise you made on one of your microphones? On a microphone, uh, mm-hmm. one was I've was given to me when a guy was cleaning out his shop. It was a little, it was the kind of microphone that used to come with a uh, Studer Revox. Uh, okay, don't get into the weeds. Just okay. uh, what was, it was the a little, uh It was free and it sold for 250 bucks. There you go. And th- so All that's right. not bad. What's but, the one you have listed right now? What's that going for? Right? It, we'll, do, we'll give you a commercial. It has none bids right now. I think I have it listed for mm, 2600 but that's uh, just look it up on eBay. Hashtag I have no life and uh, see if I'll uh, be there. If somebody wants to go get your microphone, where do they go? Tell just, them right now. Just search RCA 77D. There's only two RCA of them on RCA 77D. I say you sell it by the end of today. God, I'd love to. And give I will an update tomorrow. I will know. put a present right. in the box. Uh, we'll take a break. We'll come back with more. You are listening to the Mike Omera Show. It's the music, Mike. Your Paisan Paulie. I know it's been a long time since you heard from me, but the boss sent out a proclamation that we all have to listen to. Now he wants you to share the show. That means let your friends tell their friends and their other friends that the Mike O'Mara show is on the air. And they can go to TMOS.com to check out the bonus show. And they can go on the TikTok and the Instagram for snippets of the show. Do it today. The boss asked you, and let your friends be a friend of ours. Capiche? Opera. We now return you to the man, the myth, Thank you. the legend, Thank you. Mike O'Mara. Thanks, Paulie. Welcome back to the Mike O'Mara Show. KiwiCo yes. is defining the future of play by making it engaging, enriching, and seriously fun. They create super cool hands-on projects designed to create a lifelong love for learning among kids. Each month, KiwiCo delivers crates packed with fun and sparks creativity with kid-friendly topics and activities. From engineering robots to learning about the science of cooking, there are interesting topics for every kid and real hands-on skills to explore, discover. Uh, It's wonderful. Uh, Discover subscription lines for infants and preschoolers to teens and beyond. The moment of pride and accomplishment at the end of a KiwiCo project sparks creative confidence for ongoing experimentation. I know it benefited Michael, and it still yes. does. <laughs> KiwiCo does the legwork for you so you can spend quality time tackling projects together. Plus, there's no commitment. Pause or cancel anytime. Redefine learning with play. Explore hands-on projects that build creative confidence and problem-solving skills with KiwiCo. Get 50% off your first month plus free shipping on any crate line at kiwico.com slash tmos. That's 50% off your first month at k-i-w-i-c-o dot com slash tmos. All right, let me get my one bitch. It's not all that funny, but I just want right. to get it off my chest. Get it off so, your chest, Mike. I'm reading an article this morning, and I uh, might have seen a news story recently on it, too, about the fisheries in Alaska. And they're talking about the halibut 
uh, you know, are being decimated off the coast of Alaska. This Do you is mean on the, the final heels, frontier? The final frontier, Alaska. This is on the heels of uh, talking about the the crab. Maybe it was the snow crab that yeah. were all gone and nobody knew where they are. I've thought this about fishing. Where I live up in Maine, yeah, they regulate uh, lobster fishing in a very, very uh, active way. They bitch about it, the fishermen, but it's regulated. How, how know, do they regulate it just in a broad it's stroke? It's the catch. It's the type of catch. It's the size of the catch. That's what I thought. It's the numbers yeah. of the catch. The weight of the uh, lobsters. Do they have to, is there a certain size requirement? Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I don't know all the details with it, but I do know it's kind of done like that. But I, I've always wondered about when you hear about depleted fisheries. And you get people saying, we don't know whether it's this or whether it's that. Well, to me, it's pretty straightforward. And I've always thought that, you know, back in the day, yeah. right, when uh, fishermen would go out in their little bitty rope nets yes. and grab what they could, as we have industrialized commercial fishing, and this has been going on from uh, the 60s on, 50s perhaps. Yeah. You know, why are we surprised when you watch a show like Deadliest Catch where you put these massive traps down and you bring up massive quantities of a species and then you're surprised when suddenly they're gone? I right. don't get that. And it always amazes me when you hear people saying, well, we just don't know what we're doing. Well, you're going to find something else to do because it's finite, yeah. right? Yeah. It's finite. By the way, have you gone into your favorite store, Costco, and taken a look at a king crab leg recently and seen the number on that and what uh, that costs now? Yes. Mm -hmm. It's stunning. Yeah. It is absolutely stunning. Now, I love fresh fish as much as the next guy, but when an industry is predicated on massive consumption, back in the 1970s when they had Russian trawlers uh, that were violating the limits of the fishing limit on the coast. Right. Coming in closer than they should. Right. We lost an ecosystem of cod. There were cod to be had everywhere. There were cod that you could get in the bays, in the inlets. They're gone. They've been gone for 50 years. Sad. Uh, because this was done. So I've always been sensitive to this idea. When you have what, I don't know if this is the technical name for it, but we'll call it a dragger. And okay. it is a type of fishing where you drag the bottom. Now, I've had different theories given to me about this, but I think that when you are fishing and dragging a net on the bottom to get, say, a bottom-feeding fish like a halibut, mm -hmm. you not only uh, take everything that's down there, but you take the ecosystem. Sure. You take the grasses. You, you scrape take the places it. Yeah. where you scrape it. And that's what killed another bottom-feeding fish, the cod up in Maine, it's, and mm. that's what's killing the halibut. So I just wanted to vent that and just go, you know, we have to be more aware, and we're not. And when you talk about, you know, families that have fished for 150 years, well, get your shit together <laughs> and, and pay attention to yes. what we're doing because I think that's the problem when you talk about it. So when you see the eyes... The eyebrows, you know, go up to the hairline and people go, I don't understand what happened. Well, yeah. what happened is you probably, you know, wrecked the ecosystem because you're bringing in, you know, 10,000 pounds of this fish when the best way to do it is, you know, make it more expensive. Yeah. Get them one at a time. Make it more expensive. Well, you know, and know. again, a lot of the, some of the blame lies on the consumer. You know, mostly I like to eat it. You mean? Well, yeah, I mean, you know, and so it's, it's but you can't blame uh totally the consumer no because if you price it uh as an exclusive it uh, needs to catch, be pr probably priced a little higher sure and i you know and by the way the, you hear conflicting uh rules about fish farming and what that can do that can mess up the environment sustainable as well. fishing mike but sustainable is the key and even with that uh, look do i discount the fact that there's global warming that that yeah. might be a factor yeah but i don't think that it's necessarily the be all end all i think the you know when you've got, if you ever watch commercial fishing, there are TV shows about it. Deadliest yeah. catch all the time. You see these guys that are dragging the bottom. So I think we have to be smarter about it and not be so goddamn surprised 
uh, when they say, oh, the halibut are gone. Yeah, the halibut are gone because you were dragging up the bottom and pulling them in 10,000 pounds at a time, you morons. That's what it is. So, so with that said, how is, your, how is your pond of smelt doing? Oh, they are thriving. <laughs> I know they it's a bony are, fish, but it's delicious. Yeah. Oh, man. But the yard still smells like poop. So uh, that's what we're doing. Not with related. Yeah. But you know what? You still can get a nice can of Omera smelt uh, for the holidays. Partially so deboned. Yeah. We're not going to give away fruitcakes or sell them. We're going to be doing smelt. Nothing like a big can of smelts. Mm, and they keep you regular, too. Uh, we'll take a break. Come back with uh, the flip side right after this. Big tables, cherry blossoms, pop, and Mount Rushmore. It's all part of the latest bonus show. Welcome to the Mike O'Mara bonus hour. And furniture, we got some fantastic f***ing deals for you. In what crazy O'Mara pulp fiction do you see that we're somehow sabotaging you? Mezzuno. <laughs> what a fine group of golf clubs. Cherry blossoms, they're not for you there anymore. It is. I love that you have mm. included a fruit flavored soda. What about designing women? Hot. What are you talking about? Hey, that's cool, Mrs. C. The TMOS Bonus Show gives you more bounce to the ounce and is made for those who think young. Gift a subscription and give it to a friend today. Find it at MikeOmeraShow.com. If you don't know what we're talking about, then listen harder. Get the bonus show do each it. and every week. Man, do I love this song. Oh, boy, Stevie Wonder. Fantastic, everybody. Power 105. WAVA. Here to talk about dadgrass, everybody. Dadgrass is fantastic. I'm holding a jar of the gummies right love here. Love them. Do you need an afternoon reset? Do yourself a favor and uh, snag five minutes for a dadgrass toke break. That's right. You heard me right. Uh, or two, perhaps. Mm-hmm. They've also got mom grass joints as the perfect pick me up to spark your creative flow, or the original dad grass joints to quiet your mind after your nine to five. Dad grass is legal, it's organic, smokable hemp that relaxes your body and mellows your mind. Their 100% organic pre roll joints are very low in THC and high in CBD, so you can enjoy the effects of CBD while keeping a clear head. And if you want the toke without the smoke, Dadgrass also has a CBD tincture made with the same high-quality hemp. It's easy to dose, and the effects come on smooth. And if you're not looking to toke, Dad Grass also offers the finest tinctures and gummies, gummies on the market. Yes. All the mellow goodness, no smoke required. There's the car, the, the jar, jar right there. Dad Grass will leave you in a euphoric mood, people. All Dad Grass products are federally legal for ages 18 and over, and it ships right to your door anywhere in the U.S. of A. Right now, Dad Grass offering TMOS listeners 20% off your first order when you go to dadgrass.com slash TMOS. Go to Dadgrass. Dot com slash TMOS for 20% off your first order. Remember, Matt, that's dadgrass.com slash TMOS. Before we get to the flip side, I have to ask this question because, Shoot. Uh, you know, the, the sabotage comment made in that, uh, uh, is he giving you the itinerary for the trip? Down I actually uh, filled in my information for the ticket purchase yesterday. Yeah, so we are good. Yep, Mike was paranoid. Hello. The flip side. Do you like Who did the, the vocal for the? Do flip you like side? the announcer? Who's the announcer? <laughs> it's a British movie called The Flip Side. I looked everywhere. The flip side, and it's it's like a rom com. And I just found him say The Flip Side. The Flip Side. <laughs> Make that louder. Anyway, uh, let's get right to it, Rob. Yeah. Spiewak, take it away. Um, sad, Mike. I know you are still reeling from the death of one of the founding members of Leonard Skinner. Are you also sad to know that Robert Hamer died? Who's Robert Hamer? Half of the uh, novelty act, Barnes and Barnes. Perhaps you know this song. Um, actually, it, it fits in good considering what we were just talking about. You don't hear novelty records anymore. Fish heads, fish heads, pony, pony, fish heads, fish heads, you don't remember it? Heads, eat them up young. No. In the morning, laughing happy fish heads. The question for you, Mr. Spiewak. Yes. Is there any obit you won't share? No. My God, I have to, did this chart? I I don't know that it charted. It got a lot of play. It got a video God. on Saturday Night Live. It was on really? Saturday. Yeah. And I mean, it's from the late 70s or early 80s, but it found its way to Somehow Julia. Somehow I missed that one. It found its way. Julia still likes it to this day. And the other half of Barnes and Barnes is also not named Barnes. It's 
Billy Mooney from uh, Lost in Space. He's still alive. He's right? still alive and banking on all that stuff. See him at a local Comic Con near you. But wonderful. I'm not going to play the Bachelor tape from last night because Oscar's not here to explain it. Perhaps okay. we'll postpone it. But I just will tease you, Mike. I could actually, if you played it, I could conceivably make up the scenario. Okay. Well, I think it's you, now. Let me ask you this question: yeah. If you played it yeah. and I listened to it. Could I make up the uh, scenario? Well, it's it's kind of a it's a fool's errand because it's written so stupidly and badly. He Who's tells talking you, to who? The Bachelor is narrating the fact that they are in a foreign land. Where do you think they sent oh. them? All right, you're a good call on your part. So Sorry. we'll play yeah. it tomorrow. But, good. But, but, <laughs> I live for it. I can't wait. That'll Just know fantastic. that he's taking all of his uh, his young lady friends to Eastern Europe. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. How exciting! I've always wanted to see East Germany. <laughs> no, not there, but you're close. Okay. You're very right, close. Um, what if you had a job podcasting and you were scared of microphones? You'd probably choose another career, right? Like physically afraid of a microphone? F- afraid of or, them. Or afraid of public speaking? No, no, afraid of the actual object. Really? Yeah. Well, wow. this is a waitress who works at a pub in the United Kingdom. Her name is a Charlie Everett. She's scared of ketchup it's quite unusual for me to be near a lot of ketchup bottles um like if i i just feel really it almost feels like they're they want to come and eat me and they want to hurt me i don't want to touch it i don't want to be near it i just want it away if these ketchup bottles were open i would not the bottles want to eat her yes the ketchup wants to eat her (laughs) and she's gotten a job in food service very odd naturally in this room, I would be sprinting down that road. The smell is suffocating. Oh, it's warm. I like the smell of ketchup. I shock. <laughs> it's a great condiment. Shocker for that. It is a great. It Who really doesn't is. like ketchup? Yeah. Come on. I don't like uh, ketchup on a hot dog, though. No, no, no. But what about a hamburger? Oh, I mean, it's uh, mandatory. Yeah, meatloaf. Key, key yeah. on meatloaf. Well, I don't like it when they put the whole like a coating of meatloaf across. Well, you the, know what I'm uh, thinking more a coating of, of ketchup across the meatloaf. I'm thinking more that. of like a sandwich, like the day after meatloaf. You make meatloaf to have the sandwich the next day. Join us again when Oscar takes an early leave uh, for <laughs> Fat on Fat on the Mike O'Mara <laughs> show. Thank I'll be, you. Mike. I'm selling meatloaf on eBay. <laughs> Very exciting. Yes, it'll sell better than those microphones. No, Mike. You see. Mm-hmm. Something is worth only as much as someone will pay for it. I'm looking. Well, we gave it a promo. We'll see what I happens appreciate today. it. I do. I do. We shall see. Now, let's close with this. I'm not in the dating scene anymore. You're not in the dating scene anymore. But those who so are. So you think. Ah, look at you. Handsome. Uh, here's a TikToker who says the best way to find a date, and it may surprise you. Turns out, if you're looking for love, all you need to do is go to Home Depot at 8.30 in the morning on a Wednesday. They're there. Literally everywhere. I am the only woman in that entire store. Okay. So ladies, if you're struggling to find love, grab yourself a cup of coffee, throw on some mascara, and head to Home Depot at 8.30 on a Wednesday. Girl, I got you. Now, I know it's a girl thing, but it's different for me because I went to Home Depot last Wednesday morning and I opened the door and I screamed, I'm looking for a screw. Looking for a screen that didn't go over. I didn't, didn't go, go over. They asked well. me to leave. I know. That's uh, that's very, very scary. And then you use that word for the uh, male anatomy. Member. So uh, <laughs> stop it. Uh, we got to get out of here. We'll be back with a brand new episode tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, that's it. We look forward to seeing you. Uh, we'll talk about a new phenomenon called Spring Break at Home. Oh, yeah, Rob's doing it with his son, and people are doing it all over the country. We'll be right back uh, as soon as tomorrow. So anyway, take care. For Rob Spiewak and uh, Oscar Santana, Mike O'Mara saying so long, everybody. Bye-bye and ciao-ciao. Want more? Make sure you check out the Mike O'Mara Bonus Show. Get it at MikeO'MaraShow.com. Mike O'Mara, Radio Entertainment. If you're waiting for a hug, you might want to pack a lunch. U.S. and the greatest country in the world. Rocky Road? Hello, everybody.